What's the word, y'all? Man, this is the perfect 2020 free agency for every free agent for every team. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, let's see what uh Grant Hughes. I don't think I've read a Grant Hughes article yet, so shout out to him at BR. Um, who does he think the perfect 2020 free agent for every NBA team is? This came out uh yesterday or maybe two days ago. And you know, I'm just seeing what's up, man. Y'all love when I react to these videos, and let, let's see what goes down. First team is the Atlanta Hawks. Chris Dunn. Chris Dunn. Okay, all right, all right. I could see, I could see why Chris Dunn would be a nice free agent for the Atlanta Hawks. He is the antithesis of uh, Trey Young. You know, Trey Young is all O no D, and Chris Dunn is all D no O. So you know what I'm saying? He can be the good defensive backup to Trey Young. I personally want Chris Dunn to resign here in Chicago. Again, he has no offense, but his defense... That's, that's, that's the dogs, if you didn't know. But his defense is just so elite. I would feel stupid letting Chris Dunn go because he is legit in, like, a top five defender at his position. If you ain't watching the boys, you don't really recognize it, but he is legit a top five defender at his position. And I love that. I love that. Um, Dunn's, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you were going to talk about his de defines with defense. The 6'3 guard, the guard led the league in steals rate and proved himself capable of shutting down both bad court spots. Yeah, come on, man. He played some small four for us, too, when we was out with Otto Porter being out and uh, Chandler Hudson being out. I like Chris Dunn. I like Chris Dunn. Then we have Boston Celtics, Harry Giles. Now, the Boston Celtics won't have a lot of money to spend, so, of course, they'd probably love to have Anthony Davis, but I'm feeling he's trying to make it realistic so Harry Giles is not a bad pickup. Um, slow career so far for him, but we all know that Harry Giles has endless potential considering he was one of the top uh, high school players. And in college, he wasn't bad either. Then he had the injury right before. I'm pretty sure he had an injury right before like the draft combine of his season. And then he failed to wherever he failed to. And, you know, he's had his moments this season where he looked pretty decent. But overall, I can see him being uh, the next center for the Boston Celtics. Yeah, you know I'm saying he can hit the shot. You know what I'm saying? Play some decent defense. Then we have more Harkless for the Brooklyn Nets. Another situation, not going to have a lot of money to spend. So let's try to fill out our roster with vets who play their role well. And uh, Mo Harkless does exactly that. Um, and who never ranked above average usage of race in his position, but is still a defender and usually a reliable three-point shooter. They had to put usually because he has had a seasons where he's like, can Mo Harkless hit the side of a barn? You know what I'm saying? He had th has had those seasons, but for the most part, solid player. Then we have Jakopoto. For the Hornets, I feel like the Hornets could just, just, just go out there and try to get uh, any restricted free agent. Just try to build young assets, you know what I'm saying, and give people a chance. The Charlotte Hornets could dream and spend big on Christian Wood, but it's another team like the Hawks with enough, okay, Jacopoto. I do think uh, Jacopoto is a decent player. Um, I don't think his counting stats are going to say that he's really good, but if you watch him play, um, I'm usually pretty impressed when I'm watching him play. So I, I can understand that. The only problem is they still have Vince McBiombo. They'll still have Cody Zeller under contract, if I'm not mistaken. So adding another center into that could be kind of difficult. Derrick Jones Jr. for the Chicago Bulls. Sure, get us some defense. Defense, Get us some fun, a fun player. You know I'm saying him and Zach Levine high flying next to each other. Sure, I can't be mad about this. But personally, I would say put Anthony Davis, Anthony Davis in this spot. It's a realistic dream, but it's a dream, baby. Derrick Jones Jr. I wouldn't hate it. I wouldn't hate having Derrick Jones Jr. on my team. Then we have Cleveland Cavaliers, Josh Jackson. Um, Josh Jackson's second half of this season when he came up from the uh, G League wasn't terrible. Uh, it looked like he actually cared about basketball, which is a good sign for Josh Jackson. So I can understand why the Cleveland Cavaliers would be interested in him because um, he's a young player. In Okay. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. I just got a tweet, not from Rose, but from Shams. It says Zion. I had to look over. I had to see what the heck is going on. Sometimes Zion got injured, but he's going to be okay. He's just cramping. I don't know why that's breaking news. Maybe because of Zion. Either way. Uh, so I can understand Josh Jackson. Next. Dallas Mavericks. Add Joe Harris. Can you imagine Luka with even more shooting on his team? Uh, the Dallas Mavericks can clear over $20 million in space by renouncing Tim Hardaway Jr.'s rights. Um... But Tim Hardaway Jr. is so nice for them this season. But he has a he has a team or a player option that he could opt out of. But I feel like he'd probably opt in would be my guess. But Joe Harris added to the team. Sure. Glenn Robinson III. I have not watched much Glenn Robinson III this season. But sure, add him to the team. Former slam dunk champion. That's the only thing I remember him for at this point in his career. Then we have Christian Wood. Yes, Christian Wood for the Detroit Pistons. That should be their number one priority. Get Christian Wood back in Detroit. 
get him back in Detroit by any means possible. Honestly, get him back in there because he is one of the few uh, young bright spots on the roster. Then we have Marcus Saul with the Warriors. Yo. Oh, man. Can you imagine if Marcus Saul gets his championship with the Raptors, which he did last season, have a good run here again, and assigns another contract to another contender team and helps them potentially get back to the championship. Marcus Saul is like a type of player to me that will never age out of the NBA. That's just why I see him. He's ageless. He'll always be good. Obviously, he's not defensive player of the year like he used to be or all-star caliber like he used to be, but he's always going to be good. The Warriors would really luck out because that's one thing they're missing right now is like a, a good center that they can rely on. Kevon Looney has been missing time with, what is it, pectoral injury or something like that? He's missing a lot of time. So Adam Marcus Saul would be dope. Paul Millsap in the Houston Rockets, he'd be there five. Yeah, Paul Millsap, I'm telling you, he's like the ultimate glue guy to me. The ultimate glue guy. Now, how do the heck do they make this work? Will they end up with Paul Millsap? I don't know. If I'm not mistaken, uh, he said he made $30 plus million dollars this year. Are you trying to tell me he's going to sign for the middle of a reception? I don't really know. Maybe he will. Maybe he will. Maybe he's like, okay, I made all this money. Now let me go try to get this championship. But him switching over to the Rockets, is that put him on a roster that's more equipped to win a championship than the team that he's currently on? I don't know. I don't know. And then it'll probably put so much more toll on his body playing that five position for the, for the Rockets more than it would be playing the four for the Nuggets. Next, Tony Snell with the Pacers, bro. Tony Snell's been really good this season, bro. You love to see it. Uh, it's his specialty. He took career high 66.5% of his shots behind the arc this season and 40% of them. That's really, really good. Uh, I miss Tony Snell in the Bulls jersey, man. I, I do. I do. I'm mad that we gave up on him. Either way, I'm happy he's doing he's doing good things um, in the different places he's been at. But I hope that he doesn't stay in Detroit. I just hate to see people be on bad teams. Like, if you're going to have a bad team, make it a young bad team. Don't take the veterans away from the rest of the contending teams, you know? And at this point, Tony Snell is a vet. Then we have the Clippers, Jay Crowder. Jay Crowder is another glue guy. Just put him anywhere. He's going to be successful in whatever role you give him. He can run some three. He can run some four. He's going to defend. And sometimes he's good at shooting corner threes. And I say sometimes because sometimes I've seen that boy airball. Lakers, bring back Anthony Davis. No brainer. Uh, Catavius Caldwell Pope for the, why did they use this? Uh, this is the worst picture they could have possibly used for him. Uh, the Memphis Grizzlies bring a Catavius Caldwell Pope potentially. Um, the Memphis already has Dylan Brooks under contract for a similar role, but KCP is more consistent perimeter threat. Sure, sure. Gallinari with the Miami Heat. Now this is rumored to be potentially going down. Rumored to potentially be going down uh, at the trade deadline. Now, adding Gallinari at the trade deadline would have put the Miami Heat to this other level of contender because uh, Gallinari is such a good player when he's healthy. And this season, he's been healthy. The last season, has been healthy. Like, you imagine the Miami Heat with Gallinari right now? Dangerous team. Instead of having Myers Leonard run that four or Kelly O'Lennon getting those minutes at four or five, put Gallinari there, give Bam at the five. The team is just so much better. Um, but I don't, how do they do this? What would they have to do to make this happen? Um, Miami could use Gallo skill set. He offered all the spot of value of Miles. Yes. But what, what would they have to do to potentially get this to work? Right? They would have to formulate some type of trades. Right? Because they, they won't have the money to sign Gallinari. Not with Jimmy Butler's contract. Not with Iggy's contract. Because they just extended Iggy. But then Kendrick Nunn. Oh, Drogic is a free agent this offseason. Are we saying we, we let Drogic walk to make... I don't know. M Milwaukee Bucks, Serge. Yes. Serge is the prototypical center. For what they do, similar to what Brooke Lopez does, I'm going to defend the paint and I'm going to hit some threes and do the little things in between. So, yes, he would be the that's legitimately the best target for the Bucks. Next, Jeremy Grant for the Timberwolves. Jeremy Grant is just one of my favorite role players in the NBA. He just seems like he can't do no wrong for me. He's going to defend. He's going to hit his shots. He continues to get better at his three-point shooting throughout his career. Um, and he's still relatively young, what, like 27, maybe 28 years old? I feel like I just remember him playing for the Philadelphia 76ers as a young player like three years ago, but it was way more than three years ago. Next, uh, Brandon Ingram. Bring back Brandon Ingram. He was an all-star for you this season. Bring him back. Freddie for the New York Knicks. Yeah, Freddie's about to get a bag. Uh, what did it say? The New York Knicks 
went wild with team options and non-guarantees last season. That's one thing you can't say. No, they didn't get the, the big fish in Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, but they stay flexible by signing players to one-year deals with team options and yada, yada. It's one thing they got right to make sure they have money for the next free agency, even though this free agency doesn't have much going on or maybe just for, keep money open for the free agency after that. So Fred Van Vliet, so it's flexible. Take grab Fred Van Vliet on a four-year $80 million. I hope Freddie gets a bag like that, man. I hope he gets a, a bag like that. He deserves it. Then we have Kim Bazemore for OKC. Uh, we got to see what Andre Ropes is doing. I like Lou Dort. I'd rather just keep my, my eggs in a Lou Dort bag and have him run my small four since we just signed him. And I think Lou Dort is going to have a successful NBA career. You know what I'm saying? He's going to play that small four role for OKC pretty nicely. And then they also still have, like, Ferguson, right? Diallo. I don't know what the heck those dudes are doing. Next. Orlando Magic, get some scoring in there, baby. Y'all need that. And we got, like, one of the best six men in the league in Jordan Clarkson. Just saw that man shotgun in a beer uh, on Bleach Report a couple minutes before I hit record. The Magic head into the bubble with a top 10 defensive rating, but the worst offense of the 22 teams present. Yikes. Yes, get some O in there. Get some O in there. Or trade. Or trade one of your power forwards to get more O. That's all I'm saying. DJ Augustine for the 76ers. Get a, a scoring point guard. A point guard that can score um he'd be 32 man i feel like dj obviously was just at texas right don't it feel that way okay evan fournier for the Suns, get more scoring uh evan fournier is really good I'm trying to think with how do they make that money then we have rodney hollis jefferson i remember early in the season nick nurse was saying like hey all the free agents we signed this year are trash literally nick nurse came out and was like none of these dudes are playing well they, they just they don't know what the hell they're doing out there and then, I guess that lit a fire to Ronnie Hollis Jefferson and him being a shooting guard, small four, power four, center mode. Like, I, what the heck position is Ronnie Hollis Jefferson? I don't know. Uh, he actually been playing really solid. He, he's gritty. He's gritty out there. And then we have Myers Leonard for the Kings. Okay. Justin Holiday for the Spurs. Sure. Gordon Dragic for the Raps. I mean, if you're going to lose Freddie to free agency, you might as well bring in another point guard. Uh, and that's Gordon Dragic, I guess. Langston Galloway. Lacey Galloway, didn't he shoot the, the skin off of the ball? Has taken at least 60% of his shots behind the arc in the last three seasons. Uh, he hit 34% in 2017-2018, 35%, and then this year, 40%. So, yeah, he's been shooting the skin off of the pill. And, yeah, that's the type of players that the Utah Jazz could use. Then Davis Bertans, bring back Davis Bertans by any means possible. Because he, he, with John Wall finding him? Oh, beautiful, beautiful connection there. All right, I like this article. I like this article. Um, I wish I could read the comments, but every time I go to read comments, it never works. I think I need to be on the app to read the comments. Either way, thank y'all so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new. Leave a like. Peace. What is this? What is this? Peace.